All right, you're welcome back to the new day. And um, I have a doctor on the line. We're talking about the DNA testing for the Takradi girls and the fact that we're still awaiting results after 30 days. Do I have my doctor on the line? Hello? Hello, hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, Dr. Samuel Ajololo. Thank you so much for joining us on air. How are you doing? I'm very fine. How, how about you? I'm fine, thank you. And so, um, right. a quick one. We have found out that, you know, the DNA test um, concerning the missing Takarade girls um, is being conducted and we should get the results by the end of this week, God willing. But we also found out that it's only Kolebu in Ghana that can conduct this kind of test. So, first of all, I want to find out from you, what do you think, um, or in, in your, um, you know, give us an explanation of what has gone on during the testing of this DNA? Come again? What goes okay. On during the so what DNA goes DNA? on during, yes. Hello, can you hear me? So, and I can hear you. So okay. basically, yeah, so basically, um, um, it's just a matter of taking um, samples from okay. the family of the victims and doing a match. Okay. And doing a match. And the match it's not something that could produce a hundred percent result. Okay. Because uh, in such investigations, there are always errors, mm. and so the results could possibly be in either way. But the sensitivity is if you have about ninety-nine percent confirmation, then there is a chance, yeah. that's likelihood that the samples are really indeed that of the victims. Okay. That's been. So basically, that is what the process is all about. So it's not a matter of getting 100% margin. Mm. It's always a margin of error, except that that margin is very minimal. And so then we tend to have some confidence in the result. All right, but comparatively, a lot of us have watched uh, some of these processes take place in movies, series, uh, when it comes to Hollywood. And here we are talking about a DNA test being conducted in Ghana. Do you think our facilities are top-notch? Um, yes or no, depending on several circumstances. Uh, for example, in this case, you have several days lapses before uh, the victims, uh, before those bodies were found. And so, technically, some changes that have occurred to the samples, yeah. which can compromise the integrity of the DNA process. Mm. So, on to the point where we are able to have enough sophistication in the system to be yeah. able to detect those minor changes that will occur due to the several days they have been, uh, they have been buried, mm. yeah, then the, the process may be dicey. But I think in all, that I think the capacity to undertake DNA testing uh, in Ghana is growing. Okay. We say yes, but certainly will be there. But for now, uh, we just have to make do with what we have. Okay. But... Are you sure as well that we can avoid um, human errors? I, I think so. Uh, and that is why perhaps they, they wouldn't do just one test. Mm. Uh, they, must, they, must, they have to do at least two or more tests to be able to, to be sure. sure to confirm that. If the results for the first test is confirmed in the second test, is confirmed in the, in the third test or in even the fourth test, then there is that kind of sensitivity that, yes, our result is true. Okay. Although it's possible that confirming the same result doesn't mean the result is valid. Okay. But at least it gives some indication that, yes, we are doing something right, particularly if the protocols have been followed and even if all systemic errors have been, have been taken away. Yeah. And so you get to the truth of the issue. Yes, it's so possible. All right. Now, these human parts were taken out from a septic tank, and that, of course, uh, has a lot of DNA in there. How are we going to be able to separate what exactly we need in order to um, conduct the test, of course, and the results as well, from the other, you know, things that we could have found in there as well? Right. So this is a matter of technical expertise. Mm. In fact, as part of for forensic science and forensic investigation, yeah. you will be trained to handle instances of this nature. So going forward, it's not a matter of what else can be done, but the question whether we have the people who have that expertise to be able to handle a case of this nature. Of course, forensic cases do vary in terms of the challenges they, they come with. So mm -hmm. all things are doable, except that you need to have the people who have been trained with the requisite expertise to be able to handle such cases. So, okay. well, there could be a mixture of bodies 
within the same hole. But the important thing is that if you're able to lay hold mm. on one tissue, which you can, you can identify that this tissue is not mixed or is just coming from one person, then they know how to go about the process, where to extract, and what to do to get okay. this process. All right. And yes. All things boil down to the technical expertise of the people who are undertaking this investigation. Okay, okay. Doc, before you go quickly, I mean, Ghanaians are very expectant. We all can't wait for the results of the DNA test. How can we manage the expectations of Ghanaians? I think, and I, I, and I suppose that the public should be ready for anything. I understand the anxiety and agitation in the system. Mm. Where when people compare the, the, the manner of investigation to what happened to those kidnapped okay. Canadian girls. So there's a lot of tension, there's a lot of comparisons in the system. And all these things eventually will affect police confidence and trust. So the public should be ready for anything, whichever the case may be, we should understand that this is an investigation. Okay. And because we are humans prone to errors and making mistakes, it's possible that, well, it may not go the way people want it, mm. and that the, the victims are alive, or they are those that have been buried down there. So I would just caution us to be very careful the way we discuss it, because people carry information in different ways with different interpretations. Yeah. Some of, some of which are dangerous, and some of which undermine our collective efforts in fighting crime. So mm. we should just be very careful, and I will particularly urge the media to be very careful in their reportage, because they you know, it very well, but people carry it out of context, and yeah. so the outcome may not be what we would be expecting. Okay. So we just remain calm and let the professionals uh, do their work and give us the report. All right, thank you so much. That's all time we'll allow for. But Dr. Samuel Ajololo is a forensic clinical psychologist at the University of Ghana. Let's remain calm. And of course, let's pray that our girls are still alive and will be brought home safely.